So we got some big news today. A group of AI researchers and tech founders put out an urgent call to stop AI developments. It's an open letter that calls to pause giant AI experiments. We call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. There's a lot of big names here that you know. Elon Musk is on here, Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, Joshua Bengio, Max Diegmark. So he's the author of the book Life 3.0, and it's surprising that he's on this list since his book was rather optimistic. Then we have the co-founder of Skype, the co-founder of Pinterest, co-founder of Ripple. You have Ahmed Mustak, he's the CEO of Stability AI. That's the people behind Stable Diffusion. Andrew Yang, if you recall, he ran under the whole universal basic income premise because the AI will be taking over and automation will be putting people out of jobs. And there's many, many, many more, a lot more. And what they're asking for is to, they're asking to put a stop to AI progress or at least pause it. We call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. This does not mean a pause on AI development in general, and they're simply saying that AI labs and independent experts should use this pause to jointly develop and implement a set of shared safety protocols for advanced AI design. The AI research and development should be focused on making today's powerful state-of-the-art systems more accurate, safe, interpretable, transparent, robust, aligned, trustworthy, and loyal. We'll talk about alignment in a second here. That's an important word in there. In parallel, AI developers must work with policymakers to dramatically accelerate the development of robust AI governance systems. This should, at a minimum, include new and capable regulatory authorities dedicated to AI. I like the capable part. That's important. Oversight and tracking of highly capable AI systems and large pools of computational capability. They also want some sort of a watermarking system. So, for example, if the AI puts out code, it needs to be, we need to be able to sort of distinguish that from what they call real text. Liability for AI-caused harm. This is a tough one, and it really needs to be implemented properly. Public funding for technical AI safety research and well-resourced institutions for coping with the dramatic economic and political disruptions, especially to democracy, that AI will cause. So a lot of people are presenting UBI, universal basic income, as sort of a potential help against this or a stopgap, at least. Humanity can enjoy a flourishing future of AI. Having succeeded in creating powerful AI systems, we can now enjoy an AI summer in which we reap the rewards, engineer these systems for the clear benefit of all, and give society a chance to adapt. Society has said pause on other technologies with potentially catastrophic effects on society. We can do so here. Let's enjoy a long AI summer, not rush unprepared into fall. I was curious what they meant by this. Did we hit pause on other technologies? Examples include human cloning, human germline modification, gain of function research, and eugenics. I believe at least a few of these did get developed in China over the last few years. There was a Chinese researcher who stunned the world last year by announcing he had helped produce genetically edited babies. But he has been found guilty, and I believe he's in jail now. But yeah, it's important to understand that some of these things still happen even though we did, you know, hit pause on them. One of the people on this letter is Jeffrey Hinton. He's sometimes referred to as the godfather of AI. He for a long time pushed to make AI sim similar to the human brain. And eventually this is in fact the model that sort of had all the results that we're seeing. So in other words, he called this technology long before we were able to develop it. And he believes that we're way ahead of schedule. So until quite recently, I thought it was going to be like 20 to 50 years before we have general purpose AI. Now I think it may be 20 years or less, Hinton predicted. Asked specifically the chances of AI wiping out humanity, Hinton said, I think it's not inconceivable. That is all I'll say. Now, in case you missed this, fairly recently, there was a Microsoft research paper that, comes, that came out called Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence Early Experiments with GPT-4. GPT-4 is OpenAI's latest model they've developed. They just recently released it to the public, but it likely was around as early as six months ago or more. It just wasn't available to the public. And what Microsoft has found is that GPT-4's performance is strikingly close to human level performance and that it could be reasonably be called sort of an early version of AGI, artificial general intelligence. They put it to a series of tests asking it various questions. I did a video on this earlier. I'll link it up up at the top and in the show notes. 
But yeah, it does seem that this is a pretty big leap forward in terms of AI. Notice here specifically, they're trying to prevent the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. So basically they're saying, you came this far, but don't go no further. So first of all, it's important to understand that we really do seem to be approaching really powerful AI technologies that are likely to powerfully affect the world. That seems apparent now. OpenAI seem to have some sort of quantum leap forward, seemingly becoming more advanced than Google, at least when you're comparing the, their products side by side. GPT-4 and BARD are not on the same level. G GPT-4 is, is far, far more advanced, at least as far as I can tell. But that might just be Google holding its AI back or that it simply uses AI internally instead of focusing on chatbots, etc. Now, Elon Musk originally funded OpenAI. He was a co-founder and he did that with the goal of creating safe and transparent AI efforts. He's now very upset and feels, I would say, cheated because this company quickly aligned itself with Microsoft and is rapidly developing AI without any transparency of oversight. Again, I don't share that opinion personally. I encourage people I encourage people to listen to this interview. This is Sam Altman being interviewed by Lex Friedman. It's Lex Friedman Podcast 367. And they're talking about OpenAI, GPT-4, ChatGPT, and the future of AI. By the way, this guy, Sam Altman, expect to see his face a lot more. He's kind of going to be at the center of a lot of this. I do see the counterpoint that if this technology was visible to the whole world, that in itself could be a major risk. For example, Putin says that the nation that leads in AI will be the ruler of the world. Russian president warned that artificial intelligence offers colossal opportunities as well as dangers. Notice the date on that, it's 2017. Now it's no secret that China is making a massive push for AI. The CHIPS Act was a big move by US to try to slow that down potentially. China is also kind of notorious for stealing technology from other nations. If open AI's technology was truly open sourced and open to the public, how quickly would Russia and China be able to copy it? Would those countries agree to a six month pause? Now, I, I think they would, but I also think that they would keep developing this technology during that time to get a six month advantage. It's important to understand that US ethics and morals don't, they're not necessarily shared by the rest of the world. So the arguments for transparency are valid, but I feel like so are the arguments for keeping this technology secret, for keeping the development not transparent. The second point to understand is that we do not really understand how these models learn. In other words, they are developing cognitive tasks that are outside of what we train them on. This was the big breakthrough of neural nets and transformers and other fairly recent developments. This is emergent behavior, meaning that it's behavior that we can't predict. It's behavior that we did not necessarily expect. One of OpenAI's early projects was getting AI to play hide and seek. After hundreds of millions of iterations, it was incredibly good at hide and seek, and it showed intelligent moves in its games. After billions of iterations, it was finding game-breaking exploits that the developers did not intend. As you can see here, they found a little glitch in the physics engine and were able to launch themselves into the air. That was not by design. So the developers were not aware that this was possible, but the AI did, and it used it to its advantage. The concern here is that very simply, this could have really bad unintended consequences. Sometimes when people hear about AI destroying humanity, they will ask questions like, why would the AI be hostile? Why would the AI hate us? This is the wrong way of thinking about it. We tend to give AI human characteristics that are simply not present. For example, when you wash your hands, you're killing countless bacteria, millions, billions perhaps, of bacteria, viruses, and microorganisms on your hands. Factories around the world pump out antimicrobial soap and it's sold by the gallons. Each bathroom in the world is set up with dispensing stations that provide the, the scoop to anybody that wants it in unlimited quantities. These substances disrupt and rupture the membranes of the bacteria and other microbes, which leads to their death. But this isn't done because we hate these organisms or that we're hostile to them. We just want to have clean hands. We don't want to get the sniffles. Their annihilation is just a byproduct of our goal to have clean hands. Another way of saying that is that our goal of having clean hands is not aligned with their goal of wanting to live and reproduce. And this is why you often hear about people talking about AI alignment. We want the goals of AI to be aligned with the wants and needs of the human race. We don't want to become the bacteria that it casually exterminates. But training the AI to do that can be very difficult since we're not actually coding it. 
but rather creating these black boxes that develop intelligence that will soon likely be greater than our own. The third thing is there wasn't this huge push to stop AI until OpenAI seemed to be very close to winning the AI race. The big problem is that it's hard to guarantee that everyone will stop or pause. Governments move slow, and if you ever heard members of Congress grill tech people, it gives you a glimpse of how behind the curve they are. If they don't understand online ads and why everything online is free, then how do you expect them to understand this? And if the shadowy intelligence and military agencies of the US do in fact wield the massive power that they are believed to, they would certainly push for the US to develop this tech first. I don't see this pause happening, but I do see this as a start of a conversation that I do think we really need to have. But I want to know what you think. Are we summoning an angel or a demon? Do you think we need to stop this at all costs because of the massive risk it poses to the human race? Or do you think that we need to race to develop it before other bad actors can? And hopefully it will lead to complete automation and we humans can kick back, maybe not have to work as hard and just enjoy our lives without the daily toil. I read every comment and I try to answer most. Subscribe for more AI news. Thank you for watching.